Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. Today I'm going to do a question and answer that we get on our website through the Ask Cindy portal. I've been doing a lot of these and we're getting a good feedback from the people. We have a question here from a customer that has just bought and imported a Doberman from overseas. And this dog is very, very dog aggressive. He's only 11 months old. I'll read the question and then we'll talk about some changes that we recommended. I just have an 11 month old intact male Doberman from Europe who has strong working drives, but also not very well socialized. He arrived a few days ago here in the US. I was warned that he was very dog aggressive, especially with other male dogs. My big challenge is we have a very large house and there's at least 30 windows and five glass sliding doors on one side. And when he sees his reflection in the mirror or these glass doors, he goes into a wild, crazy fury. It could be day, it could be night, even while driving the car. I've tried redirecting his focus by getting him to pay attention to something else. I've done marker training, so I mark the bad behavior, etc redirect him, but it's really a pain when your dog gets into high drive mode on every little reflection of himself. This could include stainless steel refrigerator doors, stoves, windows, glass doors. Shades don't bother him as much. It's just that when he sees himself, he thinks it's another dog and he goes crazy. Please help as this is a big issue for us. Well, it would be for me too. It's, it's a little stressful. My first thought is this dog has only been here for a couple of days. And he probably was at the breeder's place or another home. And he got yanked out of that, put on an airplane, sent to the United States. And I used to buy lots of selection tested police service dogs in the 1980s that would come into my kennel and then they would go out to, for training to these police canine schools. And when these dogs come over, they're stressed. It takes a while for them. It takes a while for people to get over jet lag, much less a poor 11 month old dog. So this person is way ahead of themselves in training. What they should be focusing on is letting the dog settle, letting the dog rest, Giving, it, giving him his own space and keeping him away from the triggers that cause him to react like this. We would crate the dog. Uh, if the dog was still reactive, we would cover the crate with a sheet and just let him relax. We wouldn't put him in a situation where he has to feel like he's in a fight or flight type of a scenario because that kind of sounds like what it is doing marker training at this point in time, it's a waste of time. It's really not doing anything. What you should do is be doing what we do with puppies, which is teach the dog his name using high value food rewards, uh, but nothing else. We have an excellent online course on how to develop a relationship with your dog. We did it with Michael Ellis. That's what this customer should be focused on, 100%. Everything should be how can I build a relationship with the dog? What do I have to do? I'm not gonna go into that in this video. It would be a day, a day and a half to talk about it. But the information is there. The biggest thing that you kind of have to worry about here with a dog like this is you can't allow him, you don't want to allow him to practice this behavior because the more he practices it, the stronger that behavior is gonna get. So you need to, you really need to back off. We would, if it was our dog, we would make him work for all of his food. We would, we would feed this dog from our hand. We'd figure out what he needs to get and he would get all of his daily food from our hand. If he, took, if he takes the food roughly, like he's trying to bite you, just because he wants the food so much, we feed an all natural raw diet, kind of looks like hamburger. Some dogs go crazy when they get that, especially when they've been on kibble their whole life and they think, holy geez, this is Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything else combined with this new stuff. 
there's ways to handle that with a dog, and I won't go into it here. We have it in some of our other videos, but that's important. I'm also going to say that this customer has our online course on the power of training dogs with food. So they have the material there on how to do and how to work with food rewards. Use that in conjunction with building a relationship with your dog. I'll say this, that if you give this dog all of his food from yourself, it's not gonna take long for you to start to work with engagement on this dog. We have excellent videos on how to build engagement with your dog, both with Forrest McGee and, uh, and Michael Ellis. But if you wanna succeed, pick an environment that's a very sterile environment. No distractions, no windows, no, I mean, maybe your garage, it doesn't matter. If the drive is high enough for the food rewards, because you're giving him really, really good food, and he's getting it all from you, it shouldn't be that difficult for you to take him into a sterile environment and work on engagement drills. So that's something to think about, because it's very important, and it's a very important part of building a relationship with your dog. And the last thing we have to talk about is, at 11 months old, this dog is just starting to go through uh, puberty. It's kind of like even kids, people, when they go through puberty, they change. There's a whole lot of things going on with hormones. In all of the years I've had uh, and raised many, many German Shepherds and bought German Shepherds, this age, the 10 month to 15 month, they go a little squirrely in their head because <laughs> They just don't know what's going on. Every, they're, they're maturing so quickly and they react differently. I bought a lot of really nice, nice young dogs because the owners didn't understand that this dog was going through puberty. And I mean, these dogs didn't act like that forever. If you mold them and build them and control their environment and the, the distractions that they face with and you work on engagement, you work on the you work on the building the relationship, you're gonna come out the other end here with a nice dog. And he'll just learn to trust you and then he'll calm down. And that's really what you want with a dog like this. There's always gonna be an edge to the dog like this. Usually there's always gonna be a bit of an edge. It's there if you wanna bring it out when it's an adult dog, but when it's a puppy, you're not accomplishing anything with doing that. You already know it's there. Leave it alone until he's more mature. But the bottom line is, by working engagement, you're gonna know when you've got good engagement with this dog. And when you have good engagement, then you can slowly add in distractions. You're gonna to have to read the dog. You're gonna to have to look at the dog that's in front of you and say, okay, I'm gonna think about this. I'm gonna add a distraction, I'm gonna try this, or I'm gonna try that. And if you have a problem, back away from the distraction, or stop using that distraction and wait. Go back to working on engagement. So by working engagement, you're going to provide yourself tools to redirect your dog away from some of these bad situations that he thinks are bad situations. And one last thing on, on taking the dog out in the car. The dog should be in a crate in the car, and we would cover the crate with a sheet. There's no reason to allow a dog to practice going crazy in a car. There's no reason to take a dog in a car, a dog like this, in a car, where it can go crazy barking at everything it sees outside. If that's the case, don't. If you if you don't have a car that you can't put a crate in, don't take him in a car right away. Hold off until you have more control over the dog. And then the last thing is, we do sell some products, some healthcare products that will help reduce stress in a dog. And they're not narcotic. We don't believe in medicating a dog to change its personality. But there are things that you can give a dog temporarily through its food that will help relieve some of the stress that a dog's in. And for those people that are new to Learburg, they come to us through social media. If you have any interest in good quality dog training supplies, go to our website and check them out. We don't sell anything that Cindy and I wouldn't use on our dogs. We don't sell anything that we think is cheap garbage. 
that's kind of been my philosophy from the day that I got into this dog training videos and dog training supply business back in 1982. So it's 40 years, 41 years, long time. <laughs>